Hello again, welcome to part 3 of this series on how to create your own physics system using Godot Engine for your 2D platform game. And in this video we're gonna implement the heart and soul of every physics system, which is the collision checks. And we're gonna do it using uh, bounding boxes. It's gonna be a longer video, so make yourself a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like and let's start to start things off we need to add new scene that will define the hitbox so click on the plus to add the new scene and i'm gonna name it hitbox and save it under the scenes folder now let's attach a script by clicking the attach button and i'm gonna name it hitbox as well save it under the scripts folder Okay, cool. Now I'm going to add some export variables to the hitbox. If you don't know what export variable is, it's just a variable that is available in the inspector, in the editor. Uh, so I'm gonna add the export var x and y. And I'm also gonna add the width and the height. And it's better to give the default values for export uh, variables, so 0, 0 and 16 by 16 okay another variable I want to add is the color so we can see the hitbox in the inspector so I'm gonna add the color I'm gonna do default color as blue so 0 0 1 and I'm gonna give it a opacity of half now in order to run uh, some code in the editor we need to use a special keyword and it's the tool so we add tool to the top of the script now every code that runs in the script is gonna run on the editor as well and I'm gonna add the draw function so I'm using the built-in draw function draw and I'm gonna do draw rect and I'm gonna pass it uh, rect2 with our x, y width and height and also the the second argument it accepts is the color so we send color we also must call the update function in order to redraw the rect if you don't do that we won't get live changes so right update nice okay now let's add the hitbox to the player so i'm gonna choose the player scene and i'm gonna choose the root and click on the link scene button and choose the hitbox nice as you can see the origin of the hitbox is at zero zero it doesn't fit the player so i'm going to change the values of our export vars and i'm going to do x minus four the y minus seven the width to eight and i'm going to set the height to 24. Next thing I want to do is to add a reference to the hitbox inside the player script. So we're going to do on ready var hitbox equals dollar hitbox. Remember on the first video we made the wall scene. So finally we're going to use it. I'm going to open the wall scene. And I'm going to add hitbox to this scene as well. So link scene and hitbox. And in the wall, I don't want to move. We can offset the hitbox to be also in the center, but for me, the origin on the top left is fine. So the X, Y are gonna stay zero. And the width and height are 16 by 16. Okay, now let's attach a script to the wall and save it to the script folder. Delete all that. Okay, so now let's add reference to the hitbox just like we did in the player script so i'm gonna do on ready var hitbox equals dollar hitbox now in order for us to easily find the walls in the level i want to add uh, in the ready function call to add to group and i'm gonna say walls that way we can easily find all the walls in the level and we're gonna filter the nodes that are in this group Cool, so now let's add some walls to the level scene. I'm gonna go to level and I'm gonna add a new node. Uh, 
just pick a node here and rename it to walls it's not related to the walls group we did earlier it's just for order and I'm gonna link the wall scene so link wall and now I have one wall in the scene uh, one thing I want to do is snap it to grid because we said every all the position are integers so it's better for you to do that also the player needs to be on the integer values and I'm gonna add some walls to the scene I'm gonna Control D to duplicate and let's make some flow here duplicate some more I'm gonna choose all of that and duplicate Control D making some beautiful flow and that's it I'm gonna pick the player up okay before we continue let's actually change the color of the boxes for the walls to something else uh, purple is nice okay okay so now I want to do a little explanation on how two boxes are colliding we're gonna separate collision on the x-axis and then the y-axis so let's say we have this bounding box and no matter if the origin is in the center like in the player or on the top left like on the walls we can calculate the boundaries of the box right left top right and bottom so let's say this box is box A and now we get another box box B and also for that we can calculate the boundaries left top right and bottom we could say that we have a collision on the x-axis if box A right is greater than box B left but that's not enough because if we imagine that box A is sliding to the right it will end up here but you see box A right is still greater than box B left and there is no longer collision on the x-axis so we need another condition that box A left is smaller than box B right so if I'm gonna write it down we say A dot right is greater than B left and A left is smaller than B right that sums up the collision on the x-axis but in order to fully intersect we need also to check the y-axis collision and it's pretty much the same like the x-axis so I'm not going to repeat everything to sum it up it's a bottom greater than b top and a top is less than b bottom let's add this function to our hitbox now uh, first I'm gonna add the boundaries so I'm gonna add left now and I'm going to use the set get keyword which lets you define a getter function this function is called automatically when accessing a variable outside the object so get left and now I'm gonna do the same for the right top and bottom so top set get get top and var bottom set get get bottom okay so now let's write quickly the getter functions func get left so where is the left boundary it's just the global position dot x plus the x offset right for the right boundary it's like the left plus the width so it's global dot x plus x plus width for the top it's global position y plus y and for the bottom is global position y plus y plus height great now let's add the intersects function which returns true if two boxes intersect so we're gonna write func intersects and it accepts the other box and we start with the x-axis check so we're gonna do self dot right greater than other dot left and self dot left is less than other dot right notice that we must use the self keyword in order to activate the getter functions from within the current object and now for the y-axis we're gonna do self bottom is greater than other top and self dot top is less than other bottom so we're almost done with the hitbox I just want to add another thing uh, remember in our move exact code we move pixel by pixel uh, but we first want to check if we have a collision and then move so I want to be able to move the hitbox and then check for collision and then move so we need to add another argument here and it's gonna be the offset a uh, vector 2 so self dot right plus offset x I'm gonna change this 
and also the self dot left plus offset x don't forget the parentheses and now for the y axis we're gonna do self dot bottom plus offset y and self dot top plus offset y okay that's it great now this function is perfect uh, so how do we use it we need to add a script that will act as uh, the game manager and it will be responsible for checking the collision between objects so I'm gonna add a script and call it game and it's going to be a singleton and if you don't know what a singleton is it's just a script that is available from everywhere you don't need to attach it to any object so right click the scripts folder and add script I'm gonna name it game to define the script as singleton all you need to do is to go to project then project settings then you should go to the auto load tab click the folder icon then add the game script one last thing make sure that the singleton checkbox is checked cool so now let's open our game script and we're gonna create a new method here uh, which is check walls collision which takes an entity to check and iterate on all the walls in the current scene it also accepts the offset like we used in the intersect function write it down func check walls collision and accept entity and the offset great so now we need to iterate on the walls and to do that we use a special function so var walls equals get tree dot get nodes in group and now we pass it the walls okay so now I'm gonna use a for loop so for wall in walls we're gonna do if entity dot hitbox intersects intersects with what with wall hitbox and we're gonna also pass it the offset then we return true and if there was no intersection we're gonna return false and that's it for this method great if you got here don't give up I know it's a long video with a lot to take but we're almost done we just need to change our movement functions and some code in the player class so bear with me okay so let's start with the movement functions open the actor script and first thing I want to do with the movement functions is I want to add a callback and we are going to fire this callback when there is a collision it is a good way to let the player react to collisions in this tutorial we're just gonna change this, the velocity to zero when we are colliding so add a callback here in move x and also in move x exact add the callback and in move y and move y exact also in the calls to move x exact and move y exact and we're done finally let's check for the collision so inside move x exact inside the y loop I'm gonna do if game dot check walls collision and I'm gonna pass self as the entity and the second argument is a vector 2 and we're gonna pass step as the x value and 0 as the y value and if it's true then we're gonna do callback dot call func and right after it we're gonna return because there is a collision and we can't move anymore uh, don't worry about the call func I'm going to explain it in a little okay now let's do the same in the move y exact function and it's gonna be almost the same I'm I'm going to remove the fake collision rows that we wrote and we're gonna do if game dot check walls collision again pass self and here we pass vector 2 and in the x we pass 0 this is the difference and in the y we're gonna pass the step and again right after it we're gonna do callback dot call func and return Uh, before we move to the player script I want to add two helper functions to zero the remainder so I'm gonna add func zero remainder x 
and all it's gonna do is just uh, do remainder dot x equal to zero and the same we're gonna do for y zero remainder y and remainder y is equal to zero and now I open the player script and let's add the functions to call on collision and it's gonna be on collision x and all we're gonna do here is set velocity dot x to zero and we're also gonna call the method zero remainder x and we do exactly the same for the y so on collision y velocity y equals to zero and now we need to pass these callbacks to the move functions so in move x we're gonna use a special keyword and the keyword is funcref and it lets you define the reference to function and in order to call the function you use call func like we did earlier and it accepts two parameters the first one is the object that owns the function so in this case it's just self and the second one is a string of the function name so we're going to use in the move x we're going to do on collision x and on the y we do the same with on collision y before we run and test it i just want to add some walls to the level and i'm going to duplicate some walls here so that it will be more interesting and we also get a x-axis collisions finally we got to the moment uh, we can run and test the game so let's do that f5 and nice i'm colliding with the walls but for some reason i cannot jump oh yeah i know what it is uh, remember that we used to fake the on ground when we start the frame now we need to actually check for collision so i'm gonna add the collision check game dot check walls collision and here i'm gonna send self again and the direction is vector2 dot down and i'm gonna save and run again and now yep we are jumping that's great so friends we got to the end of this video and probably this series and um, i hope you had fun if you got any questions or ideas for me for the next videos or anything you want to ask me in general, please leave your comments below. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. Love you. Bye bye.